Hello there, Quicksilver Slash, and today, well, we get to see life from the other side of the keyboard for one of these Corgi Captains. And I do not envy the task they are given to go out in a game knowing most of the other team is probably going to try to focus them down. Because, hey, there's some free balloons and crates on reward. Now, Corgi number 236 here definitely picked a good ship to be doing this in. The Nikolai is tough, she's durable, and she can absolutely lay down the damage. And to make things even more special is running the Rasputin camo from the Halloween event. When you look at what makes up the teams, well, it is a tier 5 game. The one I'd be dreading is the fact that there are tier 5 carriers. These low tier battleships really don't do that great and already you can see chat just filling with people hoping they manage to get number 236 and I, I get it it's nice to do I managed to kill one oddly enough in a Duguay Truen and that probably wasn't the best ship for a Corgi to be in because the Duguay just gets wrecked and can pretty easily be penetrated by just about anything so hopefully for this Corgi, things go a little better. And you can see right off the bat, heading north, looking to consolidate and really defend the base. And it's probably a good place to be. Because if he was suddenly spotted down here, every single person would be going for him. By heading up north, buys a bit of extra time. Means, you know, some of these ships up here should be dealt with and basically isn't going to become the sole attention of everyone right away. Though he is detected by the aircraft, so it's only so long before shells start coming his way. And you can see that one of the guys in chat being like, no, come back. Uh, Corgi playing along, playing the role kind of a disobedient dog. It's like, you got to catch me first. Uh, I just want to play. Thankfully, something my own dog never really does. He just wants to follow along. So looking at how the map is developing so far, I think both teams are kind of setting up for more or less the same thing. You can see the Omaha in the south and Zwiho were spotted both going north. Eh, a couple of their ships are heading southerly. You really on this map don't want a big difference in ships at any one point because it can be hard from the north to support any of the south and vice versa so trying to keep a balance is important unfortunately for Corgi's team they're already down one of the ships in the south a Mitsuki can do pretty well it doesn't look like they've got a destroyer down there at least yet so, you know, Torp City, unfortunately, as we hope, can just put planes in the air and find them. So that's going to be one to watch. The Omaha has turned around and a 4,000 damage hit there on the Isuzuchi. Not too bad. Rear turret's still left to fire. And Corgi just getting in little bits of damage where he can, slowly working to where he wanted to be. And you can see... Um, one of the people in chat asking if Corgi is a dev, and you know, these accounts aren't all just devs and staff. There are individuals in the community who have gotten their hands on them to help, because you need people in the game all the time for this event to be working, and I just don't think Wargaming has that many employees, or it would be like one person, and you'd get tired of it. So bringing in, you know, other people in the community to play this role. It supports the community and, well, it guarantees that people are going to see a number of corgis. Interestingly enough, too, what tier they're at changes night to night. You can look it up on the website and that'll give you an idea where you need to be to find them. But Corgi236 has finally kind of arrived with the bulk of his team. And this Isuzuchi, it's not sailing into a great place. 
tanks that shot well, but really just going into the middle of the map. Probably going to be taking shots from both the south and the north. Unfortunately, finishes that emerald off. And already the enemy team is off to an okay start. They're up one ship. They've taken out two cruisers to Corgi's team's one battleship. But I'd almost take having lost two cruisers, because if you're in something like the Nikolai, uh, Corgi isn't too or the cruiser isn't too much to deal with. The biggest threat, of course, in my mind, being that carrier, because the Nikolai does not have the AA to hold them off, which probably the other reason Corgi just wanted to be with teammates. Phoenix is really about as good as it gets at this tier as far as AA goes. There might be better, but you're not going to get a lot. One Citadel there for 8600 damage on the Dene, and you can see the Suzuchi just slowly working up. Unfortunately, it looks like they may have run themselves aground, which if the friendly Zuiho wasn't recovering their torpedo bombers right now, would be able to do some damage to. That said, perfectly side on, battleship, 8 kilometers. This is kind of the Nikolai's bread and butter. 12 shells, the damage really adds up, about 14,000 there, having what the Isuzuchi had left. Though the Isuzuchi making sure to say, hey, I'm not a pushover, I'm going to hurt you too if you sit broadside on. And you can see here, Corgi also just pushing out. Uh, one of the things, if you're going to play a Corgi account, you can't try to survive every game, I don't feel. Like, if you go into every game being like, no, I'm going to sail the corner and just survive. Deny people the chance of killing me. That's uh, just going to piss the community off. So, 236, doing a good job. Getting out in the open where people can shoot him. But once again, is a Nikolai. They're going to have to focus some attention and hit him in the right spots. I really do feel once this Japanese battleship pokes out from the other edge of land, he is going to be dead long before being able to return fire. And you can just see, Corgi's waiting. Corgi knows he's coming. This is a pretty easy one to read. The shell's coming from that enemy ship. A little bit of damage. Can Corgi finish him off? Not quite, leaving him on 2,800 health. And, well, if the team hadn't basically just stopped at the edge of cap, uh, someone might have thoughts at this Isuzuchi. And of course, the kind of crummy thing here, you have to think about what's around you, and there's a couple battleships up ahead, a couple cruisers. Staying bow in like this really is the only option. Unfortunately, it has been sailing in a straight line for some time, so eats a torpedo, has to repair that. The repair party is coming soon, so going to be able to pick up some health and you can see the Isuzuchi who right from the start has really wanted to kill him goes down chasing and that's been my experience in random battles uh, you know you see a Corgi on the other team and there's been a number of games it's basically like okay this one's a write off because a bunch of the team just from the start YOLO is trying to chase down that one ship and Please don't do that. If you see a Corgi, just play. Yeah, if you're in the right position and you have shots at them, take them. You're, you're entirely entitled to do that. Don't sail straight at the enemy fleet to start the game thinking you're going to manage to kill a ship without dying first. Because that seems to be some people's impression. And it could be the torpedo missions pushing that too. A bunch of people on destroyers trying to get their 25 torpedo hits. And I think just the culmination of a couple things is... It led to a frustrating weekend of play for myself, a bunch of my friends, and I can guarantee you a number of you probably saw the same happening. Uh, John Way, she poses a pretty big threat, and unfortunately most of those shells kind of diverge left and right of that destroyer's hull. The saving grace appearing to be, if I had to guess, that the John Way's engines are out, or might simply be AFK. Now that I really look at their map position, and that's unfortunate for the enemy team, but Corgi really can't afford to leave this ship sitting around. 
So, another full volley. And that does it. Second kill, up to 72,000 damage. And still kicking. The enemy team slowly disappearing here, but the friendly team has been melting a bit as well. This game is far from over. Now, what do we have? We've got a carrier and a British battleship. And really, going for the carrier is the choice I'd make. That ship, if left alone, is absolutely going to wreck you. Whereas the bell, it it just won't. It'll get some fires, it'll be annoying, but the Nikolai can survive that. The Nikolai can't survive too many focused air attacks. That all said, the Ryu or the Zuiho, no longer detected, so swing that booty over and do work to the nearby battleship and work indeed. Huge hits there, picks up the Confederate and another kill and that's one less ship and one step closer towards a crack in which I can only imagine how few of these there are with just the amount of focus you tend to take. I don't think many corgis make it down to the end of the battle, but at 101,000 damage, three kills, 236, doing their best to try to carry this team and help them out rather than be a hindrance. Zuiho, side on, it's a matter of time before that many citadels happen, so four kills, 120k, and that leaves just the Omaha and this Wyoming, and well, there's no way something as slow and cumbersome so the Nikolai is chasing down at Omaha, so it's time to turn bow in, get pointed at that Wyoming, and start working down another target. And this is kind of a dream situation. The Wyoming just sailing in a straight line. I don't even know who the Wyoming's looking at. Perhaps the Mitsuki? Guns don't appear to be pointed exactly in Corgi's direction. No, no, that is where the shells are. Though, clearly not exactly in Korga's location, because they do miss, and 11,000 hit points, a good hit here, could be all it takes to finish off the last remaining enemy battleship, and then it's kind of just sail towards the cap. Torpedoes in the water, what's going to get there first? The torps, the air torps, the shells, the shells get there, 9,000 damage, but not enough to get the kill, this Weeho finishing them off. Those hopes at a crack and are fading just a little bit, only the Omaha left, and granted, the Omaha shows up, it is dead. If it's in gun range. But if I were the Omaha at this point, I'd be thinking, like, it's been dark for a while. Omaha probably could have done some work if it had kited around and gone after the Cap and Zuiho. One of my common tactics on this map, if things just aren't going well for my team, is to try to just use the back door, get in the cap, but no, the Omaha gets brave, comes around a corner six kilometers away, and, well, might get a ton of fires, and you can see Corgi kind of waiting, trying to give the Omaha a chance. Because, after all, it, it's a chance for someone to get some free stuff. The Elf Monk has the fire. Eh, torps might reach, depending how Corgi sails. There's also only so long that Corgi is just going to give him the free shot. And I'd imagine as the Omaha comes out from this edge land, his chance has passed. There's the volley. And that's the game. Now this Corgi lives to fight another day, putting up some big numbers on the way. 298,000 credits, 8,000 XP, Dev Strike, Confederate, Dreadnought, Kraken, and High Caliber. And Dreadnought, you kind of just expect. When people are going to be focusing you to try to get those prizes, you're going to take damage. If you survive to the end of the game, odds are you have it. 145,000 damage, seven of which were Citadels, the rest just heavy hits, and five kills. You gotta commend Corgi at the end there, trying to give the Omaha a 
bit of a chance though in a way it almost comes across as a tease because you'd have to sit still for a long time for an omaha to be able to work down the Nikolai with guns only, especially when the Nick's only on half health and the rest of the team was kind of pushing in. Top of the team shouldn't come as a huge surprise, 1500 experience and a fun game to watch. It's interesting to see this from the other perspective. I really only saw the Isuzuchi as the only person who really YOLO'd trying to get him. The Isuzuchi from the start went, I want you, I'm going to kill you, sailed across the middle of the map, really just kept position trying to do damage to Corgi and that was the undoing of the East Suzuki. Corgi just focused him down because he was making himself such an apparent target. Anyways, I hope everyone enjoyed this. If you did, please consider giving it a thumbs up or subscribing to the channel. And as always, I'm Quicksilver Slash, and I'll have another one for you all later.